Being decisive is the act of getting to that place of making a decision, clearing your way through the clutter of all possibilities, that mistiness of, of all of that experience, and getting to a decision. I'll never forget the 16th of December 2010. I was driving my car through the local town where I grew up and it was quite a painful day. I was driving down the road and an articulated lorry plows into the side of the car. I veer off across a lane of traffic going up onto this grass verge and I'd never been in a situation like this before. I'd never been in an accident. I didn't know what to do. I, in that moment, realised I've got split seconds to make sure that the car is not now moving anymore and that I can get out and what my response is going to be, not knowing how protocol should work in all of this. And I was fine, I got out of the car, I could walk and I went to meet the lorry driver and I spoke with the insurer. That was the decision I made in that moment. I decided those were the two acts that I was gonna do. I wasn't gonna call the police, I wasn't going to call the ambulance service. It didn't need that in that moment. And I made the decision to speak with my insurer and get all the advice that I needed to get in order to now proceed with clearing a crashed vehicle off the road and how all of that works itself out. There's a cupbearer, a Hebrew cupbearer, who has to make a quick decision before a king. It's not even his king. He is the slave to this king. He has been taken away in exile with the people of Israel. And his role, his function, is to be the one that ensures that the king doesn't drink something that poisons him. This guy's name is Nehemiah. And we find this part of the story where he receives information about his home city, the city that he loves. I mean, as a people, they, they're they already uh, pulling their hair out, if I can use that expression, for the fact that they can't worship in the temple, their place where they gather and worship, in that central place. They're already struggling with that. And now they receive information that they're almost the last line of defense to their city, the wall, uh, the representation of security has been torn down. And... When we see this moment, uh, and we're going to look at just a verse from Nehemiah chapter 2, the king approaches Nehemiah with a question. Why are you looking like this? The king can see this sadness in his face. And Nehemiah has to make a decision on how he's going to respond. He had to make a decision that cut through all of the possibilities that could come into play and give a response that he felt in that moment was going to be adequate for how things transpire. And so in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 3, it says of Nehemiah that he said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my face be sad when this city, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? That's quite a statement to make, considering you're a slave. And it's a criticism of something to do with the people and the instruction of the king there in that city. Um, but yet, Nehemiah has this moment of decisive response. And, and this, this question was, a, was, was one that really needed a quick answer. And what we see here is Nehemiah doing exactly that, cutting through all the clutter of possibilities and the, the, the uncertainty that, that is in front of him with an answer that really gets to the point that he needs to make at this time. And what unfolds, which is really interesting, is that this slave now finds himself being repositioned into a place where he's able to go back and be part of the rebuilding of the wall, but he leads that whole thing. And so this decisive moment was would have been something that he, in his time on the wall, would have then looked back on and re recognized and realized, yes, there was that decisive moment. And it's brought me here. And that's why I'm doing this. When people came against him, he would have looked back at that moment and realized that in that decisive moment, 
I shared what I did with the king and that's why I find myself rebuilding this wall with these hundreds, maybe thousands of people around the city. You know, to be decisive isn't to rush. Um, it also isn't to procrastinate either. Um, but what we do recognise is that in leadership, a, the trait of decisiveness is in all of the best leaders. And we've had moments throughout these last weeks in the crisis and then in the management of the crisis where we've perhaps had to make uh, decisions and act decisively. And the reason I shared the story about the crash that I had is not just because of that example where I had to make quick in the moment decisions. Um, it's actually what took place afterwards because we do need to get to that place of making a clear decision right here and right now. But what we also have to make sure in our leadership is that once the event has occurred and once those things have unfolded, that we're not looking back on it in a way where we're regretting, where we're considering all of the other possibilities and the what ifs. And, and what happened for me in that accident was for the next three or, uh, three or four years, nobody believed me that I was in pain. And uh, I, it was only until I came to London and I saw a doctor in Harley Street who said, I recognize you're in a lot of pain. And I went on to have certain treatments that really helped with recovering um, the issue in my back, in my spine. But what happened one morning was, and I can distinctively remember this, I woke up and I'd not long had one of these injections into my spine. And I woke up and as I was about to leave my bedroom, it was as if I heard a whisper of the Holy Spirit say to me, you have to remember that you made a decision decisively not to go down to calling the emergency services route in that time. You have to let it go. And I didn't realize until then that I'd been holding on. I'd kind of been harboring this. I should have done this. If only I'd done that. Was You, you start having thoughts. Was the driver at the end of his route and he should have stopped already? And you start thinking all of these things, which in the grand scheme of things are not important. And I remember that moment where I heard the Holy Spirit ask me that question. And then you've got to let it go. And something in me responded. And in that moment, I experienced a release and a change in my body that I can't explain other than pain went. And sometimes we end up looking back at decisions we made and thinking all of the what ifs with them as well. And I want to encourage you as you listen to this to let go of procrastination, let go of the sense of having to rush. Just be decisive. Let go of the things that you perhaps have held on to where you feel you haven't reconciled uh, a decision that you've made from the past. And let your leadership reflect leadership that's decisive.